I was going to ask you about how the styling works because styling on the different platforms is far different. And if I'm creating this like shared design system, do I like, am I giving up some of the platform specific styling or do I still have some control over that? Yeah. So, well, I mean, part of that, yeah, I mean, you definitely are constrained to the style properties, but you have obviously like we kind of touched on with the class name and stuff. You do have escape patches. You also have platform specific style selectors now, which is a new feature just a maybe like a month ago that we landed. Um, so you do that. That actually is pretty nice. Um, and then I think there's also in just React um, native in, in general, they have this idea of like actually just fully forking things by using a file extension. So dot Android dot web dot iOS dot native. So we use that, like even internally in Tamagoy, for example, the popover is um, actually just, well, it uses floating UI, which is shout out to floating UI, amazing library um, by the guy who made, I think it was, called, what was it called before that? Like uh, Popper, I think, Popper. Yeah, I think his name is James. I don't know if I remember his full name right now, but uh, but yeah, I mean, he's done this before and it's such a good like library, but it, it works on native and web, but they're like, you know, there's different levels of support. So for example, for that component, we have like a dot .native version and they share a lot of things, but they also diverge in, in a few significant ways. And, and I think that's like a nice, like kind of escape hatch. So yeah, the, the escape hatches in Tamagui are pretty good. You have on the, if you just need like different styling, you have the style selectors. If you need like web specific styles that aren't supported, you have class name. Um, and I guess you could use an inline style prop because style property technically will accept like any style, valid style as well. Um, and then, yeah, and then you have the file extensions for complete divergence. Yeah, an interesting thing that we'd always had a challenge with was um, so some of the the there are some nuances with like the flex layout in React Native that can be sort of weird and require like different markup. Um, that was always one challenge, and the other thing was um, it was sometimes hard to build uh, accessible web UI. Like you had to you had to be very careful in doing that because it was really easy to leave it out, and especially it depends on who was building the component and what experience they had. So it was like a few different things of like ending up with sort of weird markup depending on the platform you're targeting. And sometimes that created a split. Um, platform specific features like accessibility things dropping out. Um, do you have any recommendations for people? So let's say they're they're picking up Tamagui and they're like building out a product with it, like about how to sort of approach some of these like platform differences or how to think about developing across all these platforms. Yeah, it's, that's great. Uh, a great kind of like interesting point. There's like a lot to it, I think. Um, I would say, well, one thing is that definitely React Native uh, web and in general React Native are getting better about a lot of this stuff. Like you touched on the flex differences. I think the new the newer versions of Yoga they've they have like a much more. There's like you can you can opt into the newer like mode that's much more consistent. That's pretty cool. Um, on the like accessibility prop side, uh, React Native and React Native Web are both moving towards supporting much more like standard web properties. So the Aria properties are now supported. Um, uh, data attributes are now supported kind of in a standard way. They're they're definitely like you know they had a bunch of like they had like these weird properties like data set or like accessibility props that were different and uh, now they're deprecating most of those and moving to like web web looking ones which is it's very nice we use aria properties internally um, i think there's a suite of hooks called like react aria i believe that's cross plat that does work on native as well um, so probably if you're like also concerned about really getting a high quality there you could check those out um, tamagui Tried to I tried to keep all the Radix accessibility stuff in place as I adapted it to native. So it I, I'll admit that it's not the best tested, you know, like, um, but we do have really good, pretty good keyboard controls and all this sort of stuff. Like, uh, um, you know, there are abstracted, like one nice thing about React Native is that it abstracts those APIs, like keyboard APIs are kind of standardized across platforms and stuff like that. So, um, but yeah, I mean, um, I, my recommendation is actually usually just to, to just build it for one platform. I mean, like it's pretty rare that your first version of your app needs to be cross-platform. Um, the nice thing about Tamagui is that you have that optionality. And I really think that like uh, one one thing that I have to get around with Tamagui is like people maybe see it as like, oh, well, that's only good if you're just doing both. If you're if you're just doing native and web, then use Tamagui. Otherwise, you know, probably use something else. But I, I really do think that it competes with anything, like any pure web library. I mean, you know, some people may like not like this idea of using class name for some stuff, but I mean, the the other features in Tamagui are just really, there's like some really, really well hard fought kind of like 
abstractions and features that are in some of these components. Um, and like the style system in general, I think is kind of on par with most style systems in terms of like, you know, the type coverage, the feature set, uh, it's really complete. Um, it's quite fast. And I think when you add in the optimizing compiler, which is pretty unique, you actually can get faster runtime performance than almost any other, like even just like the really pure web focus, like even the zero runtime web focus sort of stuff. Uh, yeah, maybe like the pure zero runtime, like web focused ones that that uh, don't, they, where you don't abstract a lot of things and you're just using them straight straight up. But I think what's nice about Tamagui's styled system thing is that it you're allowed, you can build up this vocabulary and build up these variants and these like um, abstractions that are that are very like, nice and elegant to use, but you're not actually paying the cost of like an extra layer of rendering depth of like a React component that's sitting in between you and your div. Because uh, the optimizing compiler just reads that all, flattens it out into a div again. Um, and so what I found is like, yeah, on the on the website, um, on the homepage, there's like one of the little sections, because um, there's, you know, all these different sections on the homepage that show each of the different like kind of features. And like in just the responsive feature section, it's like over 600 flattened um, components. So you're literally not rendering 600 um, React components on on mount, and it it makes our Lighthouse score, I think, like uh, it's 15% or more uh, improvement just by like flipping a switch. But it's also like the Lighthouse score is maybe even not in the the best improvement because Lighthouse is actually maybe more sensitive to like the amount of JavaScript you run, and that's where like zero runtime really like helps. Whereas Tamagui Core is about 20 kilobytes of JavaScript, and we also add like the website has every possible combination of features shown on the homepage because we're trying to show off all the, you know, all the stuff and all the components. Um, but the runtime performance is where it really shines because like, you know, it, it, you don't pay that cost on the next renders. And like, if you have a lot of elements, you know, being rendered out, um, you can feel it. And it's pretty cool to turn it on and off and like, oh, wow, this whole area just feels like much faster. Um, so yeah, I don't know where I started on that answer, but uh, <laughs> just, just plugging it in, I guess. Yeah. Like, yeah, like there's these differences in native and web and like, I think Tamagui does give you some escape hatches, but um, yeah, I definitely, I definitely want to counter this. Like, I, I, I would love to see. I need to make it easier, maybe, because the the setup process can be, you know, you, you have to, like I said, we use those platform extensions, for example, like .dot web, um, and we also have like an environment variable that you have to set to like tell it which environment you're in. And I would like to get rid of those too. Like, that would be cool. Next steps is to have like at least a form of it where like it's just plug and play. There's no build step. There's no like environment variable. Um, I think that would probably be the next step to really get like, especially web users who just, you know, you don't want to fuss around with uh, configuration if you're just trying to throw together like a, a landing page or something. So I, I want to dig more into the optimizing compiler. Like how, how determining what not to render? Because like in my experience, most of the React components I write like I feel are necessary to, to render the page. So how, do, how does the compiler choose what and what not to add or remove? Yeah, so it is limited to Tamagui components, right? So it's not mm -hmm. optimizing anything outside of the Tamagui world. Um, it, um, which is, you know, I think it's fine if that's, that's a good limitation. That would be a very mm -hmm. different project if we were just trying to optimize like any type of styling. Um, but yeah, I mean, it, and it does deopt in a certain like various cases. So like dynamic styling. If you spread, for example, props, you know, if you're spreading props onto one of your Tamagui views, then obviously we have no idea what those props are. Um, so if it was a div, then things would just fail. So we we deopt on stuff like that. Um, on native, it doesn't optimize as much because you know, like on the web, we can assume that there's CSS variables. So uh, there's a lot of fancy stuff around. I mean. There's a lot of like hard thought work because you can plug out, for example, animation drivers um, and some animation drivers like the React Native animation driver doesn't support CSS variables. So we actually have like all this crazy like amount of work that's like the optimizing compiler needs to know that if there's an animation on this uh, component um, that it can't flatten it all the way, right? But, but if it's a CSS driver, it still can flatten it because it's CSS, so it can assume that. And then at the same time, there's like these like very intense like complications between like theming and like if it's using like a raw value for this animation driver it needs to track that and and know that it so like basically there's a lot of complications there but but it's on the web it optimizes a lot more because um css variables and and media queries can be extracted and and stuff like that so you can basically like assume a lot um and then it just does like some analysis so it just loops over all the properties it try it even does try to do like using the node vm module, it tries to actually partially evaluate things. So like you can do ternaries, uh, nested ternaries, like object spreads, as long as it can analyze them, you can, you can even have like abstracted things where you pull out, you know, some props into a different file or into a, uh, up above 
you know, in the in the outside of the render loop or something, you can have like an object um, that even references other objects. Like it, it's trying to do some actual like real analysis um, using a combination of like Babel and the Node VM package um, to like to grab all the like the everything that's in scope and then like pass it to the Node VM and try and run it. And then if it comes back successful. It says, cool, we've analyzed everything. We can understand all the properties uh, statically, basically. And we can flatten this into a div at this point. But it can leave stuff like, you know, if there's conditional logic, it still leaves that. But it's just instead of like, instead of like, you know, passing to Tamagui, it's doing like a class name. So it's like, you know, this class name equals this plus conditional that class name can cat it together, et cetera, et cetera. 